Welcome to Limits, Lesson 3, Infinite Limits and Special Limits. Now there are going to be times where algebraic manipulation will just not work. No algebraic shenanigans are going to do the trick. Here, I'll give you one in point right now. This limit right here, the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1 all over x, okay? When you replace e to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 over 0, 0 over 0. However, there is nothing algebraically that we can do to this to simplify it or uh, make it easier to work with. Because that is the case, there are some limits that we will have to memorize. First, let's talk about infinite limits. Infinite limits using polynomial rational functions follow the same rules as horizontal asymptotes. So what is the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 3? You'll have to look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. You'll notice that they're both 1. Since they're both 1, take the lead coefficients and the limit as x approaches infinity will equal 3 halves. All right, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of that rational expression or rational function. Okay? Degree of denominator is more than the degree of the numerator. What did that mean with uh, horizontal asymptotes? Ah, yes. That is correct. The limit will be zero. Okay, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of that rational function. The degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator. But this time, instead of saying there is no horizontal asymptote, instead, we're going to look at the denominator. And since that x squared will make the negative infinity a positive, and that x cubed will make that numerator a negative, we're going to say that the limit does not exist, or the limit is negative infinity. And I know some multiple choice questions will say uh, some multiple choice questions will say does not exist. Some of them will have negative infinity as an option. So I just wanted you to see both ways on that. All right. This next uh, rational uh, function the degree of the numerator and the de degree of the denominator are again the same. So we'll look at the lead coefficients and we're going to say that that limit is negative two-thirds. I think I have one more for you. Yes. Alright. Once again, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Therefore, well actually, you can actually algebraically manipulate that. Factor out an x, numerator and denominator. Now I'll go ahead and replace x with infinity. Negative 6 times infinity, negative infinity. Or possibly does not exist depending on the type of question. All right, what are some properties of limits? If you're trying to take the limit of a constant, as x approaches some uh, uh, value, remember that uh, this constant's gonna make a horizontal line. Doesn't matter what x is, 
going to equal that constant. How about if you're trying to take the limit of some constant times a function? Really cool thing here. You can pull that c out, factor that out, and it's going to equal c times the limit of f of x as x approaches a. How about taking the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches a? Well, you know what you can do? You can take the limit of the first function and then add it to the limit of the second function to get your limit. Same thing will work for products. If you're taking the limit of two products, instead you can take the limit of each factor and then go ahead and multiply those two limits together to get a new limit. And how about if you're trying to find the limit of a quotient of functions? Instead, you can take the limit of the numerator over the limit of the denominator, divide those two limits, and find your overall limit. Mind you, g of x cannot equal 0, nor can the limit as x approaches a of g of x equal 0, because we know that would be an undefined uh, uh, expression. You know, 13th commandment, thou shall not divide by 0. Moving right along. <laughs> Here you go. Here are five special limits that you will definitely need to memorize. So I'll let you write them down, and then we'll talk about them. All right, the first one, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, 1 over x. Well, that's going to make this x very, very small. Like, think of 1 over 1,000. So it's going to be 1 over 1 over 1,000. Well, when you reciprocate and multiply, it's going to be 1 times 1,000. So the, so the smaller, the closer it gets to 0, the more this whole thing is actually going to grow. So that is going to be a positive infinity. Okay, if you're approaching from the left side, that's going to be negative infinity for the same reason. Okay, the limit uh, at 1 over x as x uh, approaches infinity, 0. And as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x, 0. And the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. And I really wish that Sesame Street would do a cartoon or a uh, episode on this letter. This limit is e, e, e. Yes, the limit E. That would be so cool. I used to freak out my daughters doing that to them, walking around going, ee, ee. I think it would just be so cool. All right, come on. We're already halfway done with the amount of time I have. Let's move on. Okay. Hey, does this one look familiar? That's the one I had at the beginning. The limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1 over x, that limit is 1. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, 1. Oh, by the way, the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x, that's also going to equal 1. It's just a reciprocal of 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x minus 1 over x, 0. Or it can also be written this way sometimes. The limit as x approaches 0 
of 1 minus cosine of x all over x. That also will equal 0. Five minutes left. 20 more uh, screens to cover. I better hurry up. Okay. This looks familiar to the one we just gave you where it was sine of x over x. So what we want to do is multiply top and bottom by a. And then we've got a sine of ax all over. Let's move this b over here. So just switch the order of the multiplication. And we'll change this to ax. Now that looks familiar right there. Sine of ax all over ax. That limit is going to be 1. So the resultant limit is a over b. So the sine of 4x over 4. The a is a 4. The b is a 1. The limit is 4. Okay. This one's not so cool, but it's not that bad. What we're going to do is we're going to separate it up. We're going to do the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x. Now let's we know that this one, the a is 2 and the b is 1, so that part of the limit is 2. Let's go ahead and replace 0 in here, 1 over 1, 2 times 1, that's just 1. And the limit as uh, x approaches pi over 4 of sine x over x. Oh, got you on this one. You thought it was 1, but no, sorry. The correct answer is 2 root 2 over pi. I'm thinking that you thought that was as x approaches 0. No, it's x, pri x approaches pi over 4. Replace, and you'll end up with root 2 over 2 all over the x, which is pi over 4. Reciprocate and multiply. There's your limit. Moving along. The limit as x approaches 0 of tan x over cosine x. Well, what is tangent x again? Oh, yeah, that's sine x over cosine x. So that would be sine of x over cosine of x all over x, which could be rewritten as the sine of x over x times 1 over cosine x. And now we're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 of that. That part will be 1. This other part here will replace the zero with the x with a 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So that's going to be 1 times 1. That limit is 1. Okay, the next limit we have, we're going to write cosine of x times sine x over cosine x all over x. Cosines cancel. Sine of x over x. That limit equals 1. And then the last one coming right up right now. Okay. Go ahead and factor the denominator. Put the 2x underneath the sine x. Put the x over the cosine of x minus 1. Pause while you do that, and we'll come back. All right, I separated it into two limits. 2x in the denominator for sine x, x in the other denominator. And you can see where the 2x squared went and everything. And this limit, the a is 1, the b is 2, 1 half times. This limit right here will be 0. The entire limit is 0. Hey, not bad. I still have 13 seconds. This is limits lesson 3. 
special limits and infinite limits.